I'm Jason Casserine, I'm a local Glenroy resident and um, I guess I've known about this school for a while now so I walk past the school a lot to go to the train station and to get around Glenroy and um, yeah I've also been following the articles in the newspapers and the local papers over the last few years. There's been various articles about the school trying to get funding from the government and you know not really receiving enough support so I was kind of aware of their situation and um, also that the school had been but attempted to close the school down previously. And then recently I found out that a few days after the news broke that they were trying to close it down again, or close down most of it, do the bulldozing and stuff. So I could just walked down to the school and um, some of the students were at the front. So they you know, explained what was happening, that the Benoit Special School was going to be built on the same land. And um, so, yeah, I said I'd help out and get involved. What we'll do is we can put that into that fire. It gives you that spiritual essence. I welcome you to country as well today. Option the uh, architect for the school has developed as part of a master planning process we're going to do with um, the Aboriginal School. And basically, this option allows for the two schools to live in architectural harmony, as we say, as long as they reduce the number of car parks from 148 down to whatever level we need to um, move their part of the design. They'll only lose car parks. They won't lose no buildings. All their buildings remain intact. Our buildings remain intact. They're in gathering place and our ceremony ground. And the spirit tree will also be on our side of the fence. That's a compromise from the Aboriginal community. Yeah. And I think they really should um, seriously consider it from the minister's point of view. I think it's an option that um, gets him out of a bit of a cultural hole and um, once we can get some agreement about this in principle then we can start working on the actual technical side of it. They will have to do things like move the infrastructure in the car parking but that's not an impossible task given that we can always put a man on the moon but, and maybe we can also change a plan. Um, so I think that's a really good option. Yeah, Uncle Tom Slater came to this school about five years ago. He linked in with the local group. He was an elder, he played rugby, he was offered to go overseas and play rugby, but he stayed here. He helped set up the health service and housing and stuff like that. And he was in involved in a local group that started called Wandara Club. And he came down here to have a look at the school and see what we were doing. And he's a big man, a tall man and a big man. And he came in and he looked and he laughed and talked to the kids. And he got really attached to the school in a short amount of time. We were assured that the tree would be protected, but if this little fence around it is anything to go off, that's not going to be protected. These roots go out, it's probably people foot in the radius around it. But for our 15 years of ceremony here, of the parting of Uncle Tom, of the shade it gives us, you know, the, the beauty, the birds that share it, it's, it's a silent witness and it is truly worth saving, isn't it? And it's a Wamba Wamba Club, or what we call a Nuggetuck Club in Wamba language. So uh, Nuggetuck is Wamba language for Possum Club. Janabi is the Uteroa name for the club. And if we go to this next one, which is, um, again, it's a Wamba Wamba Club. It, um, the 
Bix, my father's country at Lake Bona. So you'll see the lake down here, the lake there. And um, his message stick is that, he's got his messages on it. His totem was the Waran or the black copy of the red feathers, that's the black copy there. And um, other people got different totems, we've got emus there. Beautiful country, it maps the Murray River and the Little Murray. Or the Malu, as we call it, Wamba Wamba country. So this is around the Swan Hill Lake Boga area. Uh, Lake Boga people called Gumjun Yak people, Gumjun Yak clan. Um, one of six clans under the Wamba Wamba language group. This was done by uh, the artist uh, Lynn Thorpe. And she put a lot of um, complex designs into it. Again, it's about 30 possum skins. And um, the clothes are obviously worn for winter. Um, they're worn in ceremonies. They um, can also be used by the women to make music in terms of a drum, possum skin drum. They wrap them around their knees real tight and they beat the rhythm for when the men are dancing and cooperating in the ceremony. So they have a lot of functions um, besides keeping people warm in the mountains as that cloak does. Or um, um, we extend the cloaks also to a point where we can make a, what they call a mutty arm. Mutty arm is a big rug so it's made up of about ten of these cloaks. And they keep a clan warm at night when they have their, uh, when they settle down for the night in the bush. So they're very practical, very cultural, very ceremonial. And it's interesting that we have a number of cloaks here symbolising who we are from all over the state. And um, this school is all about that. It's about a gathering of a lot of traditional owners from a lot of places, both around Melbourne as well as uh, in the country and also in the state. We have people here from uh, Queensland, or Murray, of course. Uh, we have other traditional owners from uh, the Gunai Kurnai and um, the Murray River tribes, the Yorta Yorta, the Wamba people, the Gwana Jamara to the southwest, due to road to the northeast. So this only Aboriginal school in Melbourne still maintains cultural maintenance. That is, it, uh, we still continue the practices of gathering. We still continue the practices of making our cloaks and teaching our kids and the elders and uh, uh, showing respect and recognition about who we are individually and in terms of who our clans are. So it's really important that uh, we maintain that connection and um, you can't bulldoze that sort of culture just because you want a $22 million white school on the same side as the Aboriginal school. And you also have got to get cultural permission and you've got to get consent and I don't think that's happened much in this process over the last three years. Mere wawa para warpa kuyen berjana wawa wawa mangga perpala perpala warpa perpa warpa dunene para warpa warpa Nakawa Nunya. My name is Jida Gopalil Murray. I come from Wamba Wamba, Yorta Yorta, um, Dudaroa, the Jarjawa Rung, also Mandal Pingu. Uh, from northeast Arnhem Land. My father is David Gopalil, my great grandfather, the late Sir Pastor Douglas Nichols. I came to this school when it was a mainstream school, and I quickly learnt that this school didn't provide me and my cousins the opportunity to um, extend our understanding and build our capacity of our cultural heritage, our language, our songs, our dances. Um, we we know now that this school does. We knew in the past that this school would. We also know into the future that it will still apply, that, that the children here will, will have, have that value of understanding their own culture, language, art, songs, music and dance, their, their heritage, their ge um, um, genealogy, their family heritage, 
connection to who they are and uh, where they came from. To us this is important um, part of being um, being part of Australia, this country here in Victoria, and to understand um, a lot better about who we are and where we are today. Nakala Nunya.